Salams, you're watching the International Daily Roundup, People's Dispatch's selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Yemen's Houthis declare a three-day ceasefire. South Africa's Abalali based Majondolo movement faces rising violence. Uruguay holds a referendum on its omnibus law. And grocery workers in the United States authorize a strike. The Houthis have declared a three-day ceasefire as the war in Yemen enters its eighth year. The announcement came on, on the 26th of March, a day after a series of drone and missile attacks in Saudi Arabia. Houthi leader Mahdi al mahsad stated that it was a sincere invitation and practical steps to rebuild trust. He added that the Houthis were ready to turn the declaration into a final and permanent commitment towards peace. This would depend on an end to the siege and raids by the Saudi-led military coalition. Just hours after the Houthis' announcement, though, the coalition carried out airstrikes on both Sana and Hodeida. At least seven people were killed. March 26 marked seven years since the US and UK-backed Saudi-led forces invaded Yemen to support the Hadi government. Thousands of Yemenis held protests on Saturday to mark the National Day of Steadfastness. The war in Yemen has been described as the worst humanitarian disaster in the world. The UN has estimated that over 375,000 people have been killed by the end of 2021. This includes those killed directly, as well as hundreds of thousands killed due to the Saudi blockade. The coalition has recently escalated its attacks, reportedly launching as many as 700 airstrikes in Fayou alone. Since 2015, the Yemen Data Project has documented over 25,000 air raids with almost 75,000 individual strikes. Over 9,000 civilians have been killed in these bombings. Casualties in air wars more than tripled every month after the United Nations war crimes investigation was shut down in 2021. In South Africa, the militant shack dwellers movement or Abalali based Majondolo has been condemning growing repression by the state. Earlier this month, heavily armed and masked police conducted a night raid on the Enkanini occupation. Three members were arrested and several people were beaten up. Among them was Women's League Secretary Thandeka Sithunsa. When her husband, Siabonga Mankele, uh, rushed to their home when she was being arrested, he was shot dead. Other residents who came out to protest the violence were attacked with tear gas and stun grenades. The occupation's members have built over 3,000 shacks to house the urban poor. A hundred ABM members were stopped and searched on their way back from Siabonga's funeral. Three more members were arrested and all six have now, have now been charged with murder. The latest round of violence follows the killing of ABM leader Ayanda Angila on March the 8th. Eyewitnesses stated that gunmen led by the son of an African National Congress chief were behind the attack. Abulali-based Majondolo has been organizing the urban poor to sustain themselves independently of the state since as far back as 2005. 21 leaders of the movement have been killed by police or hitmen, allegedly at the behest of the ANC. Others have been imprisoned on bogus charges and detained for extensive periods. Scores have been injured during armed demolition drives by the police and the anti-land invasion unit. These escalated during the pandemic, despite there being a moratorium on evictions. Uruguay held a referendum on the 27th of March to determine the fate of the Law of Urgent Consideration or LUC. The omnibus legislation proposed by the right-wing president, Luis Lacal Pou, was passed in 2020. It was condemned as unconstitutional, anti-people and repressive by the left-wing broad front. The new liberal law contains 476 articles impacting sectors including health, education and the economy. The law was one of Pakal's central campaign priorities. Its induction was met with mass protests and opposition by various social sectors and unions. These groups convened the National Commission for YES to push for the repeal of 135 articles contained in the omnibus legislation. The campaign gathered over 750,000 signatures in 2021. It finally resulted in the public consultation held just this Sunday. With all votes counted, the YES campaign secured 1,065,000 votes. However, the NO option won by a margin of just 22,000 votes. The National Commission for YES stated later that while the results were not favourable, the referendum was a fundamentally democratic day. The LUC expanded police powers, including the use of force, and created the crime of resistance. It also established a spending ceiling for state institutions. 
LUC including res included restrictions on workers' rights, including the right to strike. It eliminated compulsory initial education, promoted budget cuts in the public sector and privatization of public companies. And finally, grocery workers in the United States and the state of California have authorized a strike. As many as 47,000 workers at chain stores including Ralph's, Vaughn's, Albertson's and Pavilion's cast their ballots last week. The results were announced on the 27th with 97% voting in favor. However, a date for the walkout has not yet been announced, with contact negotiations set to resume this week. The potential strike action will involve meat cutters, clerks, pharmacists and technicians. The workers are members of the United Food and Commercial Workers Union. A three-year contract covering workers at 540 stores expired on the 6th of this month. Contract negotiations had been ongoing since January, but no deal was reached with the parent companies Kroger and Albertson. The union has stated that the proposed wage deal offers an increase of only 60 cents an hour for the next three years each. This falls far short of the $5 hourly increase demanded by the workers at the end of the contract. The companies have also refused to expand safety committees and offer proper health and welfare benefits. Other demands raised included higher minimum hours for part-timers. According to the LA Times, companies have moved more than two-thirds of their workforce to part-time status. The authorization vote for a limited strike took place on the charge of unfair labor practices. The union has filed a complaint with the National Labor Relations Board, citing intimidation as well as illegal influence on workers. That's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more details on all of these stories, you can head over to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.